Hello there, and as usual, I'm Aaron from Last Day and Gamers, and welcome. So it's Tuesday, and Tuesday means one thing, we've got an exciting new update for Medieval Engineers, and you're probably wondering what exactly you'll be getting your hands on this week. Well, you might be able to see around me that we've got some roaming deers, and, well, not roaming deers, roaming deers. Now, these are new sort of animals that have been added to the environment. I can only imagine what they can be used for. I'll place a few more here, and they could possibly use for some sort of hunting in survival, or maybe this could be the very beginning of something like horses and more animals being added to the game because medieval times really allowed sort of animal technology and things like horses and different sort of pull contraptions like that to really be revolutionized and this could just be the start of something absolutely amazing but for the moment the deers are easily scared off by you approaching unless you try to approach them and creep up we'll have a go at trying to brutally murder some so we're going to attempt to try to hunt some deers now there's two ways of doing it the first one is very very ineffective from what I've actually noticed and this is trying to sneak up on them with a melee weapon maybe even try to chase this deer down you can see how he's running faster than me and I've alerted the more deers the more sort of movement that I actually make so the only realistic way of actually taking them around is by tossing a rock at them at the moment that's quite interesting I'm gonna try to devise some traps for these guys maybe some deadfall traps might be the solution leave them set up in the forest and you could hunt your food just like that I'll show you them one of them shortly so we've got a deer approaching ahead we're gonna wait until he gets very close by and then we're going to dash this stone at him at full pelt. Oh, and there we go. Deer is down. You can see he stuck his legs up in the air. Oh, that's quite good. Uh, and then I guess we could loot it for something. But at the moment, I don't think. I think it's just a placeholder. But there's a lot of placeholder animations for these. I'm sure these will have. Oh, maybe. Oh, can we pick it up? Oh, that'd be really cool. No, I don't I don't think we can pick it up. No, maybe we could pick it up. When we'll be able to pick it up later, bring it back to our camp, whack it on the fire and cook it. But they're all further survival things. It's just really cool to have animals in. And this means we might be able to have horses and other things in the future. You can see that guy's running over there. They're not really staying in packs, but I guess this is how they're working for the moment. That guy's running off over there. Let's try some deer traps. So as I was messing around spawning these deers, I started to build a number of traps. And here's the first one that I'll show you. Now, this is a really simple trap, and it blends into the environment really well. You might even struggle to see it. You can actually see it's a little bit of a drop pit here. The idea, as a deer runs over the trap, it kicks it out the way fallen into a pit below that it cannot escape so you could set these up around a forest and you just have to hope that one or two deers would fall into it and the best way of doing it would probably saturate an area with four or five traps and I've made a little bit of a longer one something I call the deer trench and that is the guaranteed way of us actually catching one so we'll place a deer down here and we'll see exactly what he's going to do so we'll place let's actually place a little bit of a pack on this side and try not to scare them off straight away that's what I'm trying to avoid we've got one deer that's just fell it fell down the track straight away so let's I'm just trying to hide away a little bit so we can startle some deer in the direction of the trap so maybe if we do this you can see that one deer nearly just tripped the trap but he's blown all the leaves out of the way so you can see as they hit them branches it opens up the trap for them to actually fall down into and once they're in it they're not going to be getting out I'll place a few near the edge so you can actually see what happens when one goes down so you can see that one deer goes down and now he's stuck within that trap and I can simply come up to him and finish the job. A little, a little bit dangerous, but it is quite inventive. I mean, now you're not just building structures in medieval engineers, you're also building tools and weapons how to hunt. So let's have a look at a few more trap ideas. So the next trap I'm going to show you is a bit more of an experimentary sort of deer trap. I'm using a lot of mechanics that are pretty much untested at the moment. Now, one of the biggest problems with rope at the moment is it doesn't wrap around objects, so it means that it'll basically clip through them like this and like that so it makes it a little bit hard to do some of the traps that i would like to do but as we can see here we have got a simple sort of tog system where you we're using these sort of toggles with the ropes so when the trap is actually tripped with the trip wire down there these toggles will fly out of place pulling under the weight of this large sort of wooden block and in turn dropping the trap so let's give it a quick go i'm gonna let a deer run through it so let's actually get a deer down into place and Aaron, of course, has used the wrong rope type. So let's actually um, give that an unhook. So once that is unhooked, you can see how we've had the first rope clipping bug. But if I just give that a little bit of a jab here and then actually unhook that area here, the rest of the trap will snap down and drop the logs on the actual target itself. So hopefully the deer would be crushed under there and then you just have to simply push the wood away and you'd find the deer somewhere inside. So obviously that's a bit of an experimental one. Might need to do a little bit of work. Let's have a look at some of the other features. So the next exciting part about this update are the ability 
to have more variety in our roof types. So as you can see, we've got a number of the standards. We've got some more rounded blocks. We can really fruit and accessorize our buildings a little bit better. But as you can see, as we've got these little rooftop topping parts, we've got more directions with them than before. So we can change the structure. So you can see we've got some end pieces that can easily be capped and changed around like so. And we've also got like pyramid, like simple blocks like that are just really simple little bits to finish off them small hooded roofs that we had so much problem with before. So we've also got corner pieces like so, so we can do ourselves a little bit of a cornered roof segment, maybe leading around some sort of villa or different ideas, just really allowing us to accessorize with our choices of roof and different sort of concepts. So let's move on again. So you can see we've got a sort of T-junction spot, perfect for them sort of intermiddle junctions. We can also have a little windows maybe fitted within that junction there itself. Now let's scroll through again. We've got a cross section. So this is perfect from them intermeeting areas between them much larger buildings that you're going to have. So just really cool indeed. Now if we cycle through a little bit further, you'll see that we've gone back through all the roof types. Now what's got really cool is that they've accessorized the rounding blocks, made them some much larger ones like this. So this means that we can have rounded towers without some of the hassle that we had before of making really small ones, then having to extend them, then turn it into ovals. Just a really cool feature. Now the final thing that I would like to add is that there has been further modding support added to this and since I'm not a great modder in area characteristic I will leave you to the links for the Steam Workshop for that and they've set up a whole guide to help you with that. So I'd like to thank you guys for watching and I will see you next time.